Hello guys and welcome back to Mrs Patmore's Phonics Lessons. Um, I've really missed doing these and I hope you've missed doing them yourself and, uh, and that you're, you're subscribed so you've found out that they're back on again and you're straight back on and having a go. Now what we're going to do over the next few weeks leading up to the summer holidays is uh, looking at phase five of the phonics um, phases because we worked so hard on phase four during the lockdown period that um, if you really followed that really well you would naturally now move on to phase five now it's really more of a year one thing and you will probably repeat a lot of this at year one but wouldn't it be great to go into year one feeling really confident and recognizing some of the new sounds at phase five before you've even had them talk to you okay um, so the thing is with phase five are there are a lot of sounds that we've heard before but they're written in a different way Okay. This is how the English language works. We've got several uh, sounds that we know already, and there's lots of other sounds for other sounds that we've heard already, but they just look different in different ways. So that's a lot of what phase five is about, new ways to make sounds we've already heard before. Uh, before we start and go on to our new sound of the day, I will flick through our phase three um, digraphs and trigraphs just to make sure you remember them if you've had a three week break from having our videos. So, I have some new flashcards here because my ones are obviously doing a job at school and they're a little smaller. So I'm going to come a little closer to the camera as I flash these to you so you can see them nice and clearly. So we have got uh, or usually yeah. I'll pause a bit so that you can shout them out to the screen because you remember them. Uh, x, qu, n, n, o. Another er, er, z, or the louder the the. I or ear. I've just chopped these up so they're kind of stuck together, so bear with me. Oi. J. Y. Ch. A. Uh, or the long oo, so uh, oo. There's our owl sound. Okay, so that's the sound and our flashcards of phase two. Okay, so now we've gone for our flashcards, we're now gonna have a go at revisiting some of those old sounds by writing them on our boards. If you haven't got a white board, then some paper will do just fine. So I think first of all, before we move on to our new sound, uh, let's have a go at writing on our boards the A sound the A sound, the digraph, so two letters making one sound. How do we write that A sound? Now hopefully you haven't had a three week break from all phonics, even though I've had a break from doing these videos. How do we write that A sound? Hmm, Let's pause the video if you need to while you write yours. I'm just going to write mine here. So the A sound, two letters making one sound. You should have the A, Followed by the I. Well, now we know our names quite well from our alphabet song. We know that the names are A and I, making the A sound together. Okay, can 
we have a go at revisiting the owl sound? Now my class frown when we say the owl sound because that's the sound in the middle of the word frown when you look really like you're confused and you're frowning. So have a go at writing the owl sound on your boards now. It's a digraph, so two letters making one sound. How are you going to write the owl sound? I'm doing it as well. Pause the video if you want some extra time to do it. And remember that I write cursive, or my children write cursively in my class, so it might look slightly different to what you're used to seeing. So the owl sound is an op, followed by a woo. But uh, because we start cursively, we have cursive whooshes coming on and whooshing off. So you just write them as you normally would if you're not in my class. And that's the owl sound. We could call them by their names, which is O and W that we've learned from the alphabet song in the past. So that's the owl sound. Now let's have a go at revisiting the R sound. My class say we have a sore throat and we're showing it to the doctor and say R. Ah. Can you have a go at writing that digraph on your board now? The R sound, R. Ah. I'm gonna write it on mine too. It's a digraph, so it's two letters making one sound. Have a go on your boards or your paper now. I'm doing it too. Pause the video if you really want to think of it yourself, which is fantastic, and you don't want me to show you now. So pause it if you need to. Otherwise, the R sound is like this. An A and a R. And we wrote it cursively, my class. So we've got a little hook on our R and a cursive whoosh coming into our letters. But you write it as you normally would. And this is the R sound. If we call them by their names, it's the letter A and the letter R to make the R sound. So that's a revisit of those three. Okay, so now we're going to go on to look at the new sound that I was introducing you to at the beginning of this programme. Now, because we're doing phase, uh, phase five phonics now, I'm getting confused there, phase five phonics, okay, so you've gone through phase one with the rhymes, Phase two were those just single sounds. Phase three, we started to look at digraphs. Phase four, when we looked at two syllable words and words with uh, the consonant sounds really close together. And now phase five are some new sounds. Now, a lot of these sounds we've heard before, but these are different ways of writing them. So it can get a little bit confusing now because you think, oh gosh, which sound do I want to write for this sound now? So it gets a little confusing, but this is more year one stuff. I'm just getting you ready for year one at this point, okay? So when you go into it in September, you don't feel like you're not gonna know what you're doing. You'll be like, aha, I know how to do this sound. I've learned it at home with Mrs. P. So our sound today is an A sound, okay? Now we already know this A sound. We wrote it, didn't we? First of all, just now with an A and an I. So that's the A sound we already know from phase three. Now there's another A sound in phase five, okay? Now that A sound is written like this, and I will show you how it's written. And I should have a new flashcard for it when I return to school tomorrow. So hopefully, my lessons further on this week, I'll have a nice snazzy flashcard for it. So here, is our new A sound, okay? It's made with an A, just like the other one was made with an A, so they're very similar, kind of the same in that sense. They both start with an A, so that's a good way to remember it. But the second sound is a Y that we're gonna have here on the end. So we know A and I already. Now we're learning the A sound as A and Y here as well, okay? Or A and Y if we want to use their names. This is why we learn the names of the letters because when it comes to writing the A sound now, um, your teachers will be able to say the one with the A and the Y rather than the one with the A and the I. So that's why we use names for letters. It gets less confusing when we start to have sounds made in the same way but written differently. So there is our new A sound of the day, okay? Now this A sound is more often used, and this is important to remember so that you don't get yourself tied up in knots when you're writing next year. This tends to come at the ends of the whole 
word, okay? So if the word was spray, like I'm going to spray the air full of a nice smell, because spray, the A sounds at the very end of the word, it's going to be this sound rather than the A, I sound that you already have learnt. Or it often comes at the ends of syllables. Remember that syllables are beats in a word. So uh, my name, Mrs. Patnell, has four syllables, four beats to it, okay? So if you've got a word that has an A sound at the end of a beat, the end of a clap, a syllable, then it's more likely to be the A, Y way of spelling it than the A, I that you've learned before, okay? A, I is more like in the middle of your words, like the jam in a sandwich, okay? So it's in the very middle of a word and not at the end of any beats in a word, it's more likely to be the A, I that you know already, okay? Now we're gonna have a go at writing this um, diagram in the air which is what I always do in my class when we learn a new sound. And we've never done that on the videos before because we haven't learnt new sounds. But we're going to write um, the A sound in the air. So what I do is say, take your finger, okay? Take your finger like this. Now, because I'm looking at you, it will look the opposite. So I'm going to twist a bit and do it round this way so I look like I'm doing the same as you, okay? So with your finger, your magic finger in the air, now, I do cursively, but you just do your at and your ya as you normally would do in your classroom. But I would cursively wish up and round. I'd come back round this way, so it's quite similar to yours. Go up the side and do my little tail flick on my at. And then I would whoosh up into my ya and a big smiley mouth. Come down low for my umbrella handle and loop through because I'm cursive. You would just stop with an umbrella handle if you don't do cursive. So that's um, doing it in the air. Now have a go while I'm going back to my seat of doing it on the carpet or on the table. Have a go at writing an A followed by a Y or an A followed by a Y if we use their name. So do that on the table or on the carpet as many times as you want while I'm getting us ready to have a go at doing um, buried treasure. Okay? Actually, before we do that, why don't you have a go at writing it on your board so you really become used to seeing it, okay? So just as I wrote it on my piece of paper here, now you've done it in the air and on the carpet, take your lid off your pen and have a go at writing that new A sound that usually comes at the ends of syllables or the ends of words. Have a go at writing it on your board now, okay? Excellent if you've done that. Now we're going to move on to a little bit of uh, buried treasure. Now, I will give a little clue. Every one of my words, this on, on today's lesson, will have our new A sound in it, okay? But our A with the A and the Y, or the A and the Y, okay? So keep a look out for that. So not the usual A sound that you've heard with A and I, but the A and the Y, the A and the Y, okay? That will be in every word. To help you out, because we're learning this new sound, I don't want to trick you guys, I've helped you out by underlining that digraph, the at and the year a digraph. So it will help you to look out for it. So remember when you see them together, don't try and blend at you. It's the A sound, it's another A sound, okay? And you'll notice that it's either at the end of words or the ends of syllables, because that's where it tends to fall. Okay, now, I haven't got my treasure chest and my dustbin with me at the moment. So we're just going to have to say that the real words are going to go on this side and the rubbish words are going to go on this side, okay? So you just have to say thumbs up for real, thumbs down for rubbish. Now remember the most important thing about buried treasure is not so much knowing whether the word is real or rubbish, it's about reading the word, okay? So I don't expect you to know the meaning of every word in reception. Okay, but it's a very good chance to get used to new vocabulary, new words, and deciding if you think they're real or rubbish. Just stick to the idea that if you've heard the word before, it's most likely real. If you've never heard it before, it's probably wise to go with rubbish. Okay? Right then, our first one in buried treasure is this one here. Hopefully you can see that nice and clearly. Okay, it's a little bit bendy on the end. I found these in the cupboard from three weeks ago. So... I haven't put sound buttons for everything because we're getting marvellous at reading now. As I've said before, I've just put it under my digraph A, okay, my new A. So, what's my word? Pause the video if you'd like to read it yourself, and I would like you to read it yourself. Otherwise, I'm going to go through it with you now. So, my first sound with my phony flicky fingers is K. And then my next sound is R, and they're very close together, very close. They almost just sound like Krr, Krr, Krr. New digraph, A, and then a sound on the end, O, 
And then my last sound, n. Let's put them all together. Kr, kr, nu a, o, n. Kr, a, o, n. Crayon. It's a crayon. Real or rubbish? I imagine all you guys have heard of a crayon, so it is real. So I'm going to put it on this side of the table. My next golden coin. Funny enough, has that underlined new digraph, which is the A digraph, and it's at the end of the word. If I just quickly show you crayon again, you'll notice that in crayon, it wasn't at the end of the word, but it was at the end of the syllable. Cray being our first syllable, our first beat, and it was at the end of that syllable, so that proves that rule. And now it's at the end of this word, okay? So I've got all these sounds, one, two, three, four, including my new digraph. So I'm going to need four phoneme flicky fingers by the end of this. My first sound is s. My next sound is t. So together, st, st, st. And then my third sound, r, st, r. And new digraph, a. St, r, a. St, r, a. Stray, stray. You might get a stray cat, which is one that is just wandering around the town because it has no owner. Or you might take a, you might stray away from the crowd where you go and walk off by yourself. So stray is a real word over next to crayon. Right, next word. You've only got three sounds here because yet again it includes our new A digraph. Okay, so I need only three flicky fingers here. I have got. First sound, you can pause it by the way if you want to read it first. First sound is g. Second sound is l. G, and together, very close together, gl, gl, g and l, gl, gl, gl. And my new digraph, a, gl, a, glay, glay, glay. Real or rubbish? Have you ever heard of glay? I've heard of clay with a curly curl. And I've heard of gay, but I've not heard of glay. So that is a rubbish word. So I'm going to put that over on this side of the table. Our first rubbish word. Okay, my next word up is this one. So we've got three separate single sounds and then our new digraph. So four in total. Pause the video to have a go at reading this by yourself. Otherwise we're going to do it together now. First sound is s. Second sound is so we've got a close together sp sp and then we've got a r sp sp a spray spray what i spoke about earlier with the a sound on the end so spray real or rubbish it's real you might spray some nice perfume on another word here do excuse this one it's on a piece of white paper i've run out of coins and my printer has run out of ink but i'm hoping to sort that one out this week so i have got three sounds three single sounds plus my digraph my new digraph of the day on the end the a sound pause the video to have a go at reading it yourself but now we're going to do it together first sound s second sound k very close together making a sk sk then an l sound sk L, skl, a, skl, a, sclay, sclay. Mmm, sounds a lot like clay again, but it can't be because it's got this at the beginning. So, real or rubbish for sclay, sclay? It's a rubbish word! You can go and join clay. And my last golden coin, nice easy one here I've saved to the end, only two sounds. You've got one single sound and a new digraph of the day, which is... The A sound, our new A. So we've got l, a, lay, lay, lay. Real or rubbish? It is a real word, lay. I will go and lay down, lay. So let's put that on that side with those. So, well done for some excellent buried treasure today, guys. We're just going to have a go now reading a couple of sentences before I set you one to write today, okay? So our first one is going to be this one here. I'll bring it up to the camera. Now do you please pause the video because at this point in, uh, in the reception year, I imagine you could give this a good go and reading it all by yourself and just reading it out to your parents, okay? 
but I am going to go through it now. So first word, nice and easy. Now we could be at the point now where we're not having to blend these sounds anymore. We see these words, we know the three sounds, we're blending them so fast in our head, we don't even have to say the separate sounds. So maybe we're just saying the whole word. I will still blend for those of you out there that are still feel comfortable blending, okay? So I will still do that with you now. But if you can read it quickly, then excellent, okay? So our first three sounds, k, a, n, can, can, common exception word, a, can a. Now this word here, I'm just going to turn the light on a bit actually because it looks a bit dark on the camera. I don't know if that helps in any way. So we've got can a, and then I've got this word here. Okay, now you might recognise this one from just now. So we've got s, t, r, and then the new digraph, which is a on the end. So st, r, a, stray. Let's go back to the beginning. Can a stray, nice easy word, three sounds, k, a, t, cat. Can a stray cat pull, pull, and then the digraph of the day, which is a pull, pull, a play. Let's go back and read it all so we know, we understand it. Can a stray cat play? What's this punctuation on the end? Well, it looks a bit like an ear with a dot at the bottom. It is a question mark, which means that this sentence, the type of sentence it is, is a question. It needs an answer. So can a stray cat play? Yes, of course they can. I imagine they're probably more thinking about where they're going to eat their next meal because they don't have an owner. But sure, they can play if they want to. OK, let's pop that one down. Our next sentence is this one. Do keep your eye out for the new A digraph of the day. Okay, now we should pause the video by all means to have a read of this by yourself right now. And then we're going to go for it together. Should recognise this from the last sentence. Three sounds, k, a, n, can, common exception word a, can a, two syllable word here, might recognise it from buried treasure. It has our a sound at the end of the first syllable. So let's tackle the first syllable. K, r, a, cray, second syllable, on, on, crayon, let's go back to the beginning, can a crayon, sp, sp, r, new digraph a, spray, spray, we had that in buried treasure as well, can a crayon spray, now this one here, remember this digraph? Also, our A sound, remember? But see how it's in the middle of a word. It's not at the end of a syllable and it's not at the end of the word. So that's where that one tends to be, like the jam in the middle of your sandwich. So let's work out this word. P -a -nt. P -a -nt. Paint. Let's go back to the beginning to make sure it makes sense. Can a crayon spray paint? Hmm. Now, what's his punctuation? Question mark, because this sentence, the type of sentence it is, is a question, so it needs an answer. Can a crayon spray paint? Hmm, not any crayons I've ever seen, so I'm going to go with no on that one. They just tend to draw lovely colours, but they can't spray it out, can they? So, well done if you read that sentence beautifully. Okay, we're going to finish off today's lesson with um, a sentence that I want you guys to write and I've got it here in front of me but I'm going to keep it to myself because I want you to write it out for your adults at home. Now it's quite a long one, okay, so your adults might want to jot it down quickly themselves so they can remember it for when you write it after this video, okay. It is quite a long one today. Now it has got the new A sound in it and I've not been cruel, I've only used the new A sound in this sentence. So just remember it won't look like the A I sound. So when you use your phoneme flicky fingers and you can hear the A sound, it will either be at the end of a word or at the end of a syllable. So it will always be the new A with an A and a Y. So keep that in mind when you're writing this sentence. You won't be needing to use the old A sound in this sentence, okay? So it'll be the new app year version, okay? So your sentence will be, 
Do not delay unless you want to stay all day. Do not delay unless you want to stay all day. It's quite a long sentence, but lots of opportunities, lots of chances to use the new A sound, okay, with an A and a Y or an A and a Y if we're using their names. Do not delay unless you want to stay all day. Now, if you're finding it tricky to write that whole sentence, it is very long, I suggest you pick some words out of it to have a go at. Definitely delay, delay. Definitely stay, because they use the A sound. And you could probably have a go at doing unless. That's quite nice and easy two syllable word for you. So if the whole sentence is too much, Try delay, unless, and stay. If it's still too tricky to do those words, that's absolutely fine. You can listen out for any sounds you can hear, and your adult can help you fill in the ones that maybe you can't quite hear yourself, okay? But otherwise, push yourself to write the whole sentence, okay? And uh, if you're in my class, pop your sentences onto tapestry so I can see them. If you're not, uh, then feel free to leave me a lovely comment to let me know how you're getting on. Um, I'm pleased to come back and do some phonics. I'm not sure if I'll get maths on, but I will definitely work on phonics um, because I just feel like it would be nice to get some phase five practice in before you go into year one so you feel really comfortable about going back to school, which is the important thing. Uh, if you are back at school, but you feel like you want to do a bit of extra phonics, then please do do these lessons, okay? So I aim to post probably around about three a week. If I can get some more in, I will try, but probably three a week for now. And it's good to be back, and I missed all of you guys, and I hope you are all well, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye!